Gear up for a gaming revolution. I forged a space shooter with the brain power of ChatGPT and the artistic flair of stable diffusion. Watch now and see how AI is changing the game. I began my game project with some quick sketches in Photoshop. I created a spaceship for myself to shoot the enemies and, of course, an enemy ship. Then I designed a logo called Starblaze. Um, this small shape uh, will be used for the life icon and this one for the laser beam. I also threw in a quick sketch for the background and crafted a design for the game over menu. Additionally, I sketched out some asteroids. I made a simple round square for the button shape. And now that I have everything, I'll use stable diffusion to refine these results. As you can see, the outcome is quite interesting. And this was actually the quickest part to complete. Writing the code took the most time. You can remove the background using Photoshop, and later I'll show you how to do the same with Stable Diffusion. I resized the images to get the proportions right and tested them over the background in Photoshop to see how everything looks together. I am using Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 installed locally on Windows. For the checkpoint, I'm using the Juggernaut XL version 6. Let's start with the spaceship using a simple prompt. I'm utilizing DPM plus 3M SDE Keras with 40 sampling steps. The resolution is 1024 pixels and for the CFG scale, I used a value of three. Moving on, I use the SDXL styles extension with a 3D model feature activated. You can find a tutorial on my Pixaroma channel on how to install and use it. Then I proceed to control net. You can also check my previous videos for more in-depth information. This is where I upload the sketches to guide the generation towards what I have in mind. Make sure enable and pixel perfect are checked. For control type, I'm using Canny. And the same goes for the preprocessor. For the model, I'm using Koya Control Light XL Canny. The control mode is set to balanced. And when you're ready, hit generate to get our first iteration. This is the result. When you find a generation that you like, you can lock the seed and apply hires fix. Well, then I use the 4X ultra sharp model with a denoise strength of 0.45 and upscale by two. Uh, however, Control Net, depending on the sketch, can constrain the result too much. So you can switch to the image to image function and using the same settings, make it a bit larger since my video card can handle it. And disable Control Net. I set the denoise strength to over 0.5 for a slightly different result. But I want it to stand out more, so I'll try a different art style like fantasy art. It's better, but to make it even more unique, I play with the noise strength. 0.65 seems to maintain the look, but adds more variation. Here's another cool trick. You can send it to the extras using the last button. And there, you can remove the background with a handy extension. From here, you can choose different models. I'll pick one for general use. When I hit generate, I'll get an image with the background removed. It's not always perfect, but it did a great job on this one. If you go to the extensions tab, you can see the extension I use in the uh, video, like Style Selector XL and Control Net, and then the one I use to remove the background. So in the Available tab, click on Load from Button. Search for RemBG and click Install. It says Installed since I already have it it can be a quick solution for removing backgrounds. 
let's uh, let's proceed to uh, the next image, the enemy spaceship. Uh, I'm using the same settings, but I've disabled high R's fix to speed up the process. I reserve it for when I need to upscale an image. When looking to explore different ideas, I opt for a random seed. Um, I replace the sketch in control net with the enemy spaceship sketch. Then I hit generate. A great feature of using a sketch is that you can change the spaceship's color in the prompt to get similar spaceships in different colors like turning it orange if desired. Moving on to the logo, I want it to blend seamlessly with the background, so I chose a ratio that matches my actual game screen size in portrait mode. Then I upload the sketch. And here's what we get. In the game, I used a different seed. Uh, let me show you quickly. The text isn't perfect and has some minor errors, but I can turn on Hire's Fix again to enhance the quality. And here's the improved result, which looks better. In, if you seek more variations or want to generate other versions, you can use the image to image feature or continue generating on random seats. To create the asteroids, I used a really simple sketch that I made in just a few seconds. Uh, without this sketch, uh, I ended up with all kinds of shapes, but I specifically wanted a round asteroid. For the button, I guided the process with a simple round rectangle sketch. It took a few tries with different prompts to get a blank button. Although I could have included the text directly on it, I wanted all my buttons to look consistent. Uh, when I use two different sketches, the results tend to be similar but never identical. So I decided to use Photoshop to add the text on top of the button to ensure uniformity. Tackling the coding was the most time-intensive part for me since I'm more of a designer than a coder, so I had to rely on ChatGPT to provide me with the full code rather than in parts. I laid out exactly what I wanted and shared the images I had. At first, I attempted to use the free version of ChatGPT 3.5, but the code was too lengthy and it couldn't handle it properly. However, with version 4, I managed to get what I needed after some effort. The process began slowly with a small chunk of code. You have to repeatedly ask for the next parts. It's essentially a step-by-step -step method. You compile the code bit by bit, request additional functions, and continue in that manner. It's kind of like assembling a puzzle piece by piece until the full picture comes to light. Working with ChatGPT to code the game turned into a trial and error process. Um, I kept um, you know, a list of all the image files I have in the folder and fed it to ChatGPT. Every time I encountered an error, I copied the error message and pasted it back into ChatGPT for troubleshooting and uh, to get the correct code. Um, as you might guess, I requested the code in Python since it's already installed on my system for running Stable Diffusion, and Python is a language I'm familiar with. The code is simply a text file with a .py extension. I copy and paste the code into this file and run it to check how it looks in the command line. This approach allows me to quickly see the changes and debug as necessary. Navigating the coding part with ChatGPT was a bit like a dance. One step forward, sometimes a step back. It's important to keep backups of the code that works because sometimes fixing one thing breaks another. When I had a stable piece of code, I'd show it to ChatGPT and explain what I wanted to change or add. If ChatGPT started giving me strange answers, um, what we might call hallucinating, and sometimes start a new chat to reset the context, like I kept ChatGPT in the loop whenever something worked well, which allowed me to get the appropriate code for the next step. I played around with various game mechanics like how the ship moves, how it fires lasers, making enemies flicker when hit, and setting different hit rules. For instance, asteroids vanish after one hit and enemy ships after three. In the end, it took me a few hours to fine-tune the code to behave as I wanted, 
but considering that I would have had to write the code from scratch and figure out all the game mechanics on my own, using ChatGPT saved me a considerable amount of time and effort. I've stored uh, the Python file in the same folder as my other game assets. Uh, now let's take a look uh, at the entire 250 lines of code. It's helpful that there are little comments throughout uh, explaining what each part of the code is responsible for. It appears to be structured into different functions um, that manage various aspects of the game mechanics, such as movement, collision detection, uh, the response to uh, the spaceship being hit, uh, tracking remaining lives, and the end of game sequence. For someone who programs, these comments are incredibly useful for a better understanding of the code's workings. Although I've been creating game asset, this is the first time I've actually obtained code specifically tailored for my game assets. Let me walk you through how I run the actual Python file for the game. First, I click on the folder path and type cmd to open the command prompt right in the folder where my assets and Python file are located. This ensures that the command prompt opens with the correct path already set. Then. All I need to do is type Python followed by the name of the Python file and press enter. This command runs the game directly from the command prompt. It's a quick and straightforward way to start testing the game and see how all the elements come together in action. When I press the play button, the game kicks off. I can move the spaceship around with the mouse and by clicking the left mouse button, I start shooting. The asteroids are simpler. They only need one hit to be destroyed but the enemy spaceship is tougher, requiring three hits to go down. If an enemy ship or asteroid hits me, I lose a life. You can keep track of how many lives I have left by looking at the top right corner of the screen where lives disappear one after the other as I get hit. When I'm out of lives, the game over screen pops up, giving me the option to play again or exit the game. There's potential for more features like a timer to see how long I survive, a leaderboard for competitive play, and more enemy ships to increase the challenge. However, since this was just a fun project for me, uh, I'm gonna stop here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Have a great day.